Welcome to EchoCast and welcome Kelsey Schmoll and Stephen Nagel. Kelsey is the clinical assistant professor at the the Ohio State University College of Pharmacy and a recent impact grant winner from the Echo 360. Kelsey is among 40 uh, 2022 Echo 360 impact innovation grant recipients who are employing Echo 360 learning technologies to create more equity, engagement, and evidence from inspired learning initiatives. And we are very honored to have her on big show today uh, to talk about the innovative work she and her colleagues across the state of Ohio are leading uh, to address a sadly uh, pressing healthcare issue, really kind of an epidemic of uh, opioid use disorder, and uh, to specifically share how technology like that of Echo Video is helping to both execute and broaden the impact of their work. Uh, prior to joining uh, The Ohio State University back in 2019, Kelsey was on the front lines of pharmacy work in both the clinical and retail settings. So she brings both intellectual curiosity and real world application to her students and her work today, uh, and clearly a lot of creativity. Now, joining Kelsey today is a longtime friend of Echo360, Stephen Nagel, also from The Ohio State University. He is a senior instructional designer at the College of Pharmacy who helped uh, Kelsey and is helping Kelsey both orchestrate and ensure those aspects of equity, engagement, and evidence uh, cut across all of the work uh, being led by this very cool uh, initiative. Uh, Stephen uh, also has a long history of instructional and instructional design leadership in higher ed, uh, particularly in the areas of accessibility, where he's shared a lot of his uh, background and experience and wisdom uh, with us here at Echo 360 and a lot of the um, folks that we have a chance to interact with uh, and in creating equitable learning experiences for both instructors and learners. So welcome to Kelsey and Stephen. Thank you. It's great to be here today. Thank you. We appreciate the uh, kind introduction and we're excited to share our work with you today. Well, I'm, I'm also very excited uh, to, to have you guys share this work, but before we get into that, uh, Kelsey, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. As I mentioned, you know, you, you come from uh, kind of that frontline, uh, you know, kind of pharmacy work. So, how does tell us a little bit about your path? Uh, how does a frontline kind of pharmacist go from like you know filling prescriptions at Kroger uh, to leading this kind of uh, work, this technology infused, very innovative work uh, at one of the world's leading uh, higher ed uh, institutions? Well, I, you know, was this always kind of the, the, the path for you when you realized that, you know, you wanted to get into the kind of, you know, kind of pharmacy work, or was this always kind of the end goal? Oh gosh, how much time do you have? <laughs> Let's think about it. No. Um, so this has been a passion of mine since uh, I was a student. So I remember being an undergraduate at Ohio State and being in my introduction to pharmacy class. And I was in a major that could have allowed me to pursue several different medical related pathways. Um, but I had a really, um, uh, a great mentor as my instructor at that time who was teaching us, uh, this was in about 2009, um, he had mentioned in class that more people are dying every day in Ohio from um, accidental drug overdose than they are from car accidents. Mm -hmm. And that might not seem like a dramatic statistic now, we all probably know that's happening, but to me when I was 18 and um, we were just kind of, you know, we were still going through kind of the prescription opioid epidemic at that time, um, I hadn't learned about that in high school, and that was really impactful to me. Um, and it was in that moment, I went up to that professor after class that day and said, how can I help? Well, what can I do? I, I'm getting into medical field, the medical field or pharmacy because I, um, you know, I want to help people, but there's this whole other side that's causing a lot of harm and um, tragedy in families. So um, that was really kind of a light bulb moment for me that I, um, I felt very uh, pulled towards this issue. Um, and that stuck with me um, throughout undergraduate and into pharmacy school. I had uh, the opportunity during pharmacy school to be an advocate for naloxone access, widespread naloxone access, which is the antidote to an opioid related overdose across Ohio. Um, and this passion kind of stuck with me. And, you know, there's not specific postgraduate training for pharmacists in opioid use disorder. Um, so I, uh, I did a residency and a fellowship and kind of tailored those to my needs and the the patient population I ultimately wanted to impact. Um, I do believe that pharmacists, regardless of the setting, whether it's community or hospital or 
um, in academia have a role to play as we all do um, in combating this issue. Um, so that was kind of my path and it has led me to um, a faculty position at the Ohio State University College of Pharmacy. Um, and to, to tell you specifically how we got into this work, uh, I have to take you back about a year and a half now. Um, there was a call out for faculty members to be a part of a committee that was charged with creating an educational symposium around substance use disorders for healthcare professionals around Ohio. I know that's a big ask. <laughs> um, so uh, the, the reason this committee was formed was because um, through the Ohio Attorney General's office, there was a committee called SCOPE, and that stands for Scientific Committee on Opioid Prevention and Education. I was not on that committee, but they surveyed health professional colleges around the state to kind of get an idea of how we were teaching about substance use disorders, what were we covering with our health professional students, and they found some, quite frankly, gaps in what we were teaching our students. Um, so from the work of the SCOPE committee came several objectives for a standardized educational experience for healthcare professional students around opioid use disorder. We found that they needed things such as uh, neurobiology, treatment, um, adverse childhood experiences, motivational interviewing, social determinants of health, and learning about ethics, ethics and stigma. So as you imagine, in pharmacy school, we focus a lot on the treatment, but we don't necessarily talk a lot about all the things that might lead to a substance use disorder, including those adverse childhood events and the social determinants of health, et cetera. Um, so those were kind of the initiatives or the goals that came out of the scope committee. And then my ask was to kind of bring those learning outcomes to life. How are we going to teach, um, teach students from across the state to um, give them a standardized experience that teaches about these different outcomes? So <laughs> there was a call out for faculty members and we got about 30 to 40 people. I was the representative from Ohio State's College of Pharmacy. And we started meeting, um, you know, we had a larger committee, but we created a subcommittee that did most of the day-to-day -day work. Um, and, you know, I actually was asked to be the co-chair of that committee. So um, from the beginning, I kind of had a leadership role in kind of creating this educational experience. Yeah. Well, um, and, and I didn't realize, I didn't realize the backstory in that yeah. not only, not only how long of a, not long, but how sort of um, deliberate a path led up to the pilot back in 2021. I mean, there's a lot of groundwork that was laid, but even personally for you, that's cool that, that you, had, you, know, you had such a kind of vision for where you wanted to kind of take, take your, 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 your own passion and combine it with your professional kind of, kind of life. That's, that's, that's really cool. So, so Stephen, when did, because to get into a little bit then of the actual, kind of the uh, um, execution of this of this work. I know we're we're glossing over a lot of really important other things here, but as it relates to 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 the actual pilot program, you know, it was this combination of of both asynchronous kind of learning and training and then some synchronous stuff. So Stephen, maybe if you could give us a little bit of an overview again, not not of what the um, what the the this this next iteration and the grant that you, you that you all just received and what it's going to do, but maybe just how the sort of the, the the base pilot kind of program was constructed from a kind of a mix of both the technology and the live and all that kind of stuff. Sure. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> part of the story was uh, when they said we need to develop this learning experience, um, Kelsey said, oh, well, uh, um, we're talking about doing an escape room and they wanted to do maybe a, a physical escape room where we bring everybody together from across the state at multiple places around the state and do all that. Of course, you know, um, we were still in the midst of COVID, um, you know, and people planning, well, how can we do physical location things? And I said, well, what about if <clears throat> we try to do something online? And so what we started to do was think about, okay, we have that asynchronous material that you'd mentioned. Um, there's six modules that the students have to complete um inside of our we have public facing learning management system so we have two at ohio state we have our carbon canvas which is for academic and scarlet canvas which is for kind of public facing continuing education outreach and engagement and so what we did is um we created those six modules in scarlet in a in a course 
And then we had the symposium move to a virtual event and um, it was, you know, through Zoom. And then they they worked, the, the learners worked in uh, interprofessional groups to solve a patient case in an escape room. And so we leveraged all the video we had was inside of our Echo 360 video. Um, you know, they were watching different vignettes and, um, you know, we recorded some things where uh, um, some of our partners in the project were role playing as a doctor, you know, dealing with a, a patient coming, patient's brother coming in the pa as a patient who had um, um, had an overdose. Um, and so there were lots of uh, avenues where we used video as a part of the case, as well as um, the escape room, um, you know, activities in general. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of the, the short of it for what we developed for the pilot. Yeah. So Kelsey, for you then, how did the, did the degree of technology that you ended up employing for the pilot. Now you're, you know, getting ready or you're, you've got, you're into phase two, or, you know, you've got, you've been broadening the kind of the reach and, and the kind of the constituents that are, you know, kind of involved in it, which we'll talk about in a second, but it is the, from what you sort of had in your mind and the, and the goal that you had from, you know, many years back, are you surprised at the role that technology, things like these video modules and all this stuff are playing, or is this kind of what you were like, like that was this part of the mission, you know, or, or, or is it, is it taking a different, you know, if you look back on it now, you're like, I can't believe this is how it came out on the other end, but you know, we're making the progress that we want. Tell us a little bit about that. Quite honestly. And I've told Stephen this, I mean, it turned out like because of the technology that we use so much better than I could have imagined. I think um, our committee um, was meeting regularly to come up with the ideas for the case. And we had really good ideas around the educational piece about what we wanted them to learn. But then we looked at each other and we're like, how are we going to make this an experience that the students are engaged in, that, that that's accessible to them, that students from around the state can collaborate together. Um, and that's really when we brought on Steven and his team um, and it changed the whole game. Um, some of the things that they were able to do just taking our basic case that was in a word document and turning it into almost, you know, I don't want to call it a game, but it was, it was kind of an engaging game for them to escape this patient case, even though none of it felt like a game. It was very serious and it was teaching important things um, through an escape room lens. Um, and what they did was just incredible. And I, I'm so happy that we brought them on because I um, I truly don't think we would have been able to utilize a lot of the material without their work making it accessible and making it fun. Um, yeah. So yeah. it's better than I would have thought. Yeah, that's cool. So so phase two, we've now we've teased this phase two now since we've been since this episode started here. So let's talk about phase two. Let's talk about how now um, yeah, you've got things aligned. Uh, you've got some you got some grant funding now uh, to 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 make you know uh, to continue the work and make it even broader. Tell us a little bit about uh, what's going to make phase two different than the pilot. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we're really excited about this next phase. Um, we have secured some grant funding from an outreach and engagement grant at Ohio State, in addition to Echo 360 grant money as well. Um, and what we heard from our students in the pilot running is. One, um, one area of, um, uh, of healthcare that was not represented on our teams or in the modules was social work. So we have been very intentional about adding educational modules around social work. And we um, have partnered with the College of Social Work on Ohio State's campus to identify somebody who can help us in the creation of that content, um, which will then open up the activities and the experience to social work students. Um, so that's what we're hoping to do in the next phase is to pilot this new educational content, as well as include other healthcare professions, such as social work. We've also been approached by nursing, um, as well as um, uh, medicine at Ohio State, who are really interested in making this almost a, a required experience for their students. So it's growing rapidly. And we um, sometimes get lost in our Ohio State bubble, but we also have collaborators from around the state who are interested in continuing this um, and to offer this uh, to, profess in, to professions such as um, physician's assistants and um, podiatrists and uh, nurse practitioners and pharmacy students. So um, we have a really wide range, dentistry students, I forgot, 
Um, so we're really excited about being able to offer this to more students and have um, more seats in the program for additional learners. Um, and then I think in the future, maybe to practicing healthcare professionals as continuing education. Yeah, yeah. The 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 potential reach uh, and impact of this program is really it's it's so impressive and inspiring. And so, Stephen, uh, back to the instructional design side. So, you know, Kelsey's out there recruiting more 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 people, more uh, sort of I don't want to call them trades, but different disciplines. I mean, this thing could continue to really flower and expand. As as somebody then who's sort of got that. You 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 got you kind of have your hands on the dials of of the tech of of what the technologies can do how you can be getting even more out of video and all these different things how do you um, you know you, you've been such a leader in areas of things like accessibility and equity how do you maintain and manage now all of this growth to make sure that everybody's you know kind of getting not just an equal experience, but the experience that they need to get to deliver on the mission of the work. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. And yes, as it as things grow, as you, you can imagine, more and more enrollees, you know, that means you've got bunches of different people looking at it from different lenses and that sort of thing. And um, you know, I think the big thing for us is well, we we also we have a um, have expanded my team a bit too, so we can kind of address these different issues. But really, um, making sure that you have a, a nice kind of quality assurance piece to it all as well, um, and and that's really kind of reviewing the content, um, reviewing it from kind of just an instructional design lens doing some thorough kind of accessibility reviews. I think one of the things that's been very helpful for us in, in the Echo video platform is that um, the captioning transcription piece is really, really important and critical. Um, and so having those, those auto-generated transcripts, I have a team that goes through and, and, and reviews those and corrects them and applies them as closed captions to our videos for, for this program. So we kind of, as we're creating new material, that's you know, going. That material is going through that process. Um, but also, you know, um, just as we're thinking about the the growth, I think th this grant is also going to help us there too. As we're seeing more enrollment um, going into into the platform, because you know, as our our Scarlet platform has you know enrollment costs associated with you, you know and those kinds of things, and and, and yeah. so having more people. Um, means more cost, but also means more layers of making sure you need to have that that quality assurance piece. Yeah. Sure yeah. Well, I will say, I, I think, um, and it's easy for me to say, because you, know, you all are the ones managing it, but I think with what you've been able to do so far, I think let's just keep, let's keep the train going. Let's, let's, let's get more, the more the merrier. Um, in all seriousness, to address this issue that that is that unfortunately is 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 increasingly uh, challenging and pressing for our communities. All right, so hey, we are at the we are at uh, almost the end here of our EchoCast, and uh, typically, and I didn't realize it until just now, uh, we're breaking some new ground here on this uh, uh, episode of EchoCast. Uh, the very last little segment is what we call Inspiration Point, where we ask the guest to share uh, one piece of advice, you know, a little bit of a lesson, just kind of the one kind of major point that they'd like all of our viewers to uh, walk away with. And we've got two guests. So we're going to have two inspiration points here. Uh, and so a little bit of a, instead of having it be a jump ball here, Kelsey, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you first, uh, what would be that, what would be that one thing? And then Steven, get your answer ready and, and make it, you know, now you've got a little bit of time to, you know, even, you know, one up uh, your colleague here if you want. Uh, but Kelsey, what would be that one? You know, with this experience uh, that that you that you're that you're having that you're creating, you know, for for those out there that are watching and 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 maybe trying to think of or trying to find a way to do similar kinds of things. You know, you've got this great little amalgamation here of both the mission and the technology and the and the actual impact. What would be in your experience so far, what would be that one piece of advice, that one key lesson that you've learned so far that you'd want to impart on somebody else watching this? Oh man, it's a good question. Just one, um, you know, and I'm not saying this because Steven is on there, but really truly, um, if you're 
out there creating educational experiences, connect with, if you have an instructional, instructional designer um, or an instructional design team um, available to you, um, connect with them early and, um, you know, get to know them. And they can do so many things that I didn't even know were possible. I mean, now I'm so excited to work with them in future um, educational experiences and in my classes and my courses. Um, like I said, they, I mean, really and truly brought this um, idea to life. Um, and so I, um, if there's one thing I know I did right, it was connect with Steven and his team. So I would um, really encourage you to do that. And um, another thing that's been really helpful is to connect with maybe um, learners around your, um, wherever you are that might be interested in this issue or your issue that you're working on. I mean, so many people we've found have been passionate about combating the opioid use disorder epidemic in Ohio and across the country. Um, once we kind of put this idea out there, we had a fellow that joined that wanted to help us and uh, disseminate the work. We've had facilitators from around the state join our Zoom calls. So um, it's all about the people, I think. Um, and that would be kind of my biggest piece of advice. That's great. That's great. Steven, how about you? Well, I, I, I'm trying to think how to top that, Kelsey. That was yeah. well, <laughs> Thanks yeah, for I'm... the blog there, too. Uh, <laughs> so I think, you know, if you're trying to take on a project of this endeavor, um, you know, I think <clears throat> identifying the stakeholders in this whole project and kind of getting to know them is really important. So, so let's say you're watching this and you're thinking that you want to develop some kind of program like this. You know, Kelsey had suggested reaching out to instructional designers, but maybe you're an instructional designer or educational technologist or something watching this too, and you're interested in being involved in this. Looking for these kinds of opportunities at your institution or partner institutions, finding that work, and then, you know, showing kind of what you can bring to the table, um, that, that'll be a really key part to kind of buying in with, with those, those stakeholders. I think a lot of this is, is also just a, a plug for project management, too, of really being able to understand kind of the scope of the work that you're doing and having some good um, foundations for, for really initiating the projects, getting that plan underway, having the development and your quality assurance pieces all, all in order. So I think that's, that's really key to kind of getting involved in something that's, you know, you want to go and see it, it, it grow. And I'm really excited about this because I know we had almost 300 students from across the state in the program during our pilot. Um, and we're looking <clears throat> at some pretty potentially large numbers as we're moving into the spring. So um, this, this is really exciting for us. Yeah, that's great. Well, uh, Kelsey Small and uh, Stephen Nagel, I want to thank you both uh, for the work that you're leading and the impact that you're making uh, not only in the state of Ohio, but really, I think uh, it's going to it's gonna go well beyond the borders of uh, the Buckeye State there. Echo 360 is very proud to support your work and can't wait to see uh, phase two and three and four and five. Uh, and thank all of you uh, also for tuning in to this episode of Echo Cast. You can check out uh, more episodes of Echo Cast and uh, tons of resources, uh, some that were referenced here in this, uh, in this episode on echo360.com and uh, reach out to us and to help us uh, or to help us so we can help you uh, achieve similar inspired learning goals. Thanks for tuning in to EchoCast. For more information on these and other inspired learning solutions, visit us at echo360.com.